In this video, we're going to make a nice sprite tint shader using Shader Graph. We're going to make both a multiply tint and a solid tint. This is a great shader to make heal and damage effects for your sprites. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so this is what we're trying to make. Over here is my normal sprite. Now I can press this button, and there you go, you can see how it flashed green as if I consumed a health item. Now I can press another button, and there you go, it flashed red as if to display damage. So here we have a nice add color effect. But we can also use the other shader for the solid tint. So I swap the shader and hit the color, and there you go, now we have a flat solid color tint. The tin color and the script are set through code. The script for handling this is very simple. We just have this simple script, which has a color and a fade speed, and on update we simply lower the alpha and apply it to our tint property. And here in the inspector we can see the shader has two fields, one for the base color and one for the tint. And in here with an alpha of zero you can see the sprite is normal, and as we increase it becomes fully tinted. So this is one effect that applies an add tint. So there it is, very nice. And this is the other effect that applies a solid color tint. And again, we just move the alpha. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. Okay, so here I am in my scene. Now let's go over here into the project files and create a new shader. Go down here to the 2D renderer and make a sprite lit graph. Let's call this our tint. Okay, here we are inside of shader graph. Now let's begin by going over here into our properties and make a property for our first texture. Let's set the reference to be underscore main text. So this is our main texture. And for default, I'm going to select the sprite sheet. There's the default sprite sheet, okay. Now let's drag the texture all the way in here. And now we sample it, so with a sample texture 2D and just connect the texture in there, okay. Now we simply connect the RGBA over here to the master color. And you can already see it in here and let's just replace this with a quad. Okay, so far so good, we have our nice quad. Now let's just test this. So in here we click on Save Asset. And now back here in the editor, let's make a material to use our shader. So over here, make a new material. And in here we can select the shader, so we go down into Shader Graphs and we select our shader. Okay, there it is, it already has the default texture and everything, great. So now let's see this in-game. And yep, there it is, the character just standing around looking perfectly normal. Okay, so far so good. Now let's apply a base color, just like any sprite has its base color. So back in here, let's make a new color property. Let's call this the underscore color, and by default set it to white with full alpha, okay? Now drag it into our graph. Now we have here our color and here our texture. So we can simply multiply both of them, multiply the color to the texture. So you can see on the preview that if we change the color, there it is, we are changing the sprite. So now let's test this out and send the out straight into the color in there. Let's save the asset and test. And yep, here's our character with our tint. So you can see here on the inspector, there we have our color field and we can change this in order to tint our sprite. All right, great. However, this is not really the tint that we want to make. This is just the base. So with this one, we can modify the base color as well as the base alpha. So just like that, the sprite vanishes. What we're really trying to do is build a tint on top of this one. So let's do that. So over here, let's make a new color, call this our tint, and make the reference underscore tint. Let's set the base color to full white, okay, normal. And for the tint, let's set it on green and half alpha, okay? So up here, let's drag the property. And now in here, it would seem that we simply multiply the tint by the texture down here. So the multiply node with this color and this texture, just like this. However, if we do it like this, then we end up really with the same tint as before. As the alpha goes down, the texture becomes transparent. So that's not what we want. We want the tint alpha to only apply to the tint color. So in here, before we multiply these two, let's first split our tint color. So in here we make a split node, then we input our color, and now we have the R, G, B, and A fields. So then we take a combine node and combine just the color, so the R, G, and the B. So we don't touch the A. So over here we have a color without alpha. And now we can simply do a multiply. And we multiply the alpha by the color that comes out in here. 
So what we've done here is we're applying our alpha to the color and not to the actual transparency. So if we modify the tint in here, if we modify the alpha and go down, this one does not become transparent, but rather it becomes black. So put it up and we have the full color, put the alpha down and we have black. All right, so with this, we can now take this and make a add node. And here we add this color onto our texture in here. So get rid of this multiply and instead we have the add, add it with this one and then we put it out in here. So now you can see over here on the preview our effect, as we increase the alpha, it becomes fully tinted in green. As we decrease the alpha, it just becomes the base color. So this is exactly how we want our effect to work. However, if we test this out, and just like that, you can see an issue. Now the tint is actually working as intended. So in here, as I increase, it's fully tinted. As I decrease, we have just the base sprite. However, the tint is also being applied to the parts that are supposed to be transparent. So we need to apply the transparency separate from the tint. So back in our graph, let's go down here and we want to grab the alpha channel from our sample texture. Then we want to take it onto a multiply node. So we take the alpha. Then we want to multiply it with the color alpha. So that means we need to split these four values into four separate values. So we use a split. Then we can take this alpha and multiply it in there by the base alpha. And just like that on the preview, you can see our alpha channel. So if we decrease the base color, it becomes transparent and on full, it has full white on the alpha. Okay. So we can finally take this alpha in here and combine it to the colors in here. So let's make a combine. Now in order to combine, first we need to split this into three separate values. So we split this color, then we combine it with these and we use the alpha from down here. And that's it. So over here, we have the main base color. We can use this to apply a base tint and more importantly, make the sprite either visible or transparent. And then we have our tint color. And in here, we can easily define how much tint we want to apply by simply modifying the alpha. So just like this, we have max tint applied. And just like this, we have no tint applied. Okay, so let's test. Okay, so here's the character with no tint. And as you can see, the transparency problem has been fixed. So now in here on the inspector, we can see our tint field. So we can take this and apply a green tint. And all we're going to do is simply increase the alpha. So just like this, it becomes completely tinted. Now we go down and it becomes empty. So just like that, we have our tint working perfectly. We can use any color we want and make it very tinted or not tinted at all. So I can use this with a simple script and apply a fading tint on key press. So I press this key and there you go. There's a nice green tint as if the character was healed. So there it is. And press another key and there you go. There's a nice red tint as if the character was damaged. So with this shader and a simple script, you can see that we have a very nice effect. Over here is the script. As you can see, it's extremely simple. It's only a couple of lines long. Up here, we have our field. So field for the material, the tint color, and the fade speed. On awake, we simply grab references to our material. We initialize our tint color and a basic fade speed. Then we have a function to set the tint color and set the fade speed. And finally, over here on the update, if the tint color has an alpha bigger than zero, then we're going to lower the alpha by the fade speed multiplied by time dot delta time and we simply apply the tint color into our shader. So this is how we modify simple properties in our shader. Here in the shader, we have our tint color with a reference of underscore tint. And that's exactly the name that we use in here in order to modify that property. So just like this, we have a very simple color constantly decreasing on the alpha. And here on the testing script, we simply test for some input keys and we set the tint color. So this one to green, red, and blue. And again, here is the effect, press a key, and there you go, we have a very nice flash. All right, awesome. So now that we have this basic shader working, let's make a second version that applies a complete solid tint. Using this as our base will make it very easy. So here on the project files, let's simply go to the tint and duplicate it. And let's call this the tint solid. Okay, here's our shader. Now in here, this is going to be mostly the same. The biggest difference is up here on the multiply, combine and add nodes. So in here, let's get rid of the multiply node. And we're also going to get rid of the add. So we connect this one directly. And now up here, let's make a blend node and we modify the mode in order to be overwrite. And now this node blends a value into another one based on a certain value. So we have the base, the blend and the opacity. So you can use the base as our texture, just like that. Now for the blend, we're going to blend with our color and for the opacity, we're going to use our tint alpha. So here you can see the node preview. And if I increase the alpha on the tint, there you go. It becomes a solid color. And if it goes down, it vanishes. 
All right, so this is our solid tent. So then with this, we simply take this one out, put it into the split, then we split it, combine it with the alpha from down here, and we have our output. Okay, so here we have our graph. And now here we simply go into our material, and instead of using the tent, let's use the tent solid, and let's test. And okay, there it is, and I press the button, and there you go, there's a nice full solid tent. So press it on green, on red, and on blue. And if we pause, and look at the tent, and let's put it on green, and we increase the alpha, and there you go, there's a full flat solid tent. So we can apply this to any color, and with the alpha it is full, and with down it goes back to normal. So here is the effect, and again let's change for the previous tent, and here is the other effect. So with these two it's up to you to decide which one best suits your game. As always you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time!